in just over a month, elected senators and lawmakers will sit in a new parliament. That's the 10th National Assembly. While well, the leadership of the All Progressives Congress is likely to decide the criteria for who becomes the next Speaker of the House of Representatives uh, within the next few days, with at least seven top contenders for that top job. Well, let's bring in House of Representatives member elect an APC lawmaker representing Oyo State's Egbeda Onoara, Federal Constituency, Akin Alabi. Akin, good to see you and thanks for your time. Thanks, well, congratulations are in order because not yeah. many made it back. You're one of the lucky ones. Uh, one of the about 87 so far, mm. returning out of 360, very mm. poor. When we talk about this now, there's something that a lot of people want to understand about the politic in which we understand is ongoing, mm. uh, specifically as uh, we have a lot of new entrants into the National Assembly. Yes. Now, speak to us, give us uh, a bird's eye view of what's happening now in the Green Chamber, that's the House of Representatives. Well, we've got about 10 or 11 members that have signified their interest to run for the speakership race. And we're talking about members cutting across every geopolitical zone. Apart from the Southwest, I don't think any member have come out to, from the Southwest to come out to signify their intentions. And all of them are capable, all ranking members, all brilliant members. So a lot of politicking, as you said. There's the talk about zoning, um, which is normal, which is a tradition in Nigeria's parliament. The ruling, the majority party, the APC in this case, even though some people argue that it's not majority, because if you add the number of the members of the PDP, the Labour Party, the NPP, the other members, they're more than the, than the APC members that won. But we have the majority. So as the party with the majority, we decide how the leadership is going to be like. So a lot of us are looking to the party to tell us, shall I say tell us, to about the zoning formula, which section of the country is going to produce the speaker. So many of us in the House of Representatives, we formed a group, we call it a joint task and we're comprising over 200 members. We cut across all the political parties. For example, we've got two chairmen, the co-chairman, Honorable Kumo is APC, Honorable Kingsley Chinda is PDP from River State, and we've got the secretary, Honorable Medaki, who is of the NNPP from Kano State. So it cuts across all the political parties. And we are saying you, that... You don't have a Labour Party member? We, we've got, we've got. In <laughs> fact, some of the... I just mentioned the co-chairman and the, and, and, and the okay. secretary. Yeah. In fact, some of the state coordinators are of the Labour Party. So we're saying that we are going to follow the zoning direction of the APC-led uh, government coming in. Right. And if they say not west, we're going to go not west. If we say not central, we're going to go not central. Well, the last time... At least I checked. It, it, I mean, it reports that the APC may just be throwing it open and not really go the way of zoning uh, just yet. But tell us more about this uh, joint force uh, or joint, joint task. task, right? Yeah. And what exactly uh, it hopes to uh, achieve. And you, you did point out earlier that 87 out of 360 yeah, returning is quite, uh, yeah. is quite poor, don't you think? Aren't you concerned that that could affect uh, or upset things in the House, especially as uh, the leadership tussle you Well, know, I'm concerned starts. about the number of the new members and, and not just about the election of the speakership. Mm. I'm concerned because it's like starting parliament all over again. Because parliament is an institution that requires a lot of continuity. It's like a school where you learn and get better and better. One of the reasons why we respect the U.S. Congress is because members return. Obviously, members don't perform yeah. well. Members keep returning, and we have a very strong Congress. If you look at the 117th House of Representatives, I'm talking about 2011 to 2013, because the two-year term in the United States, mm -hmm. only 10 members did not return out of all the members. So we have continued. They have continued, and it's a strong uh, Congress in the U.S., but it's not so. So I'm worried not just about the speakership. I'm worried about the running of the house because running of the house because there's going to be a lot of new members. You talked about 
um, the APC throwing it open. No, that's not what I. That's not what I hear from okay. sources. Great. I was still at the residence of Ashwa Jubala in two, mm. two days ago, and there are indications that the zoning formula is going to release any moment from now. Ashwa Jubala is going to go to Rivers to see Governor Week to commission some projects with Governor Week in the next couple of days, and after that, the APC leadership is going to hold a meeting. And we're expecting this zoning formula to be rolled out. The issue of affirmative action also comes in. Mm. Nana Onoha, for example, is saying, look, all the men should step down, you know, in the interest of fairness, uh, sense of inclusivity, and what have you. I Everyone mean, has why got not? A, all ranking members have got a right to, to, to justify the position. Because obviously, the, 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 our, our laws in the House say you must have legislative experience to. To, to become the speaker. So all the 80 circa 87 of us, we we have the right, even me down from the southwest, I have the right to say I want to become the speaker. But what we are trying to achieve have is Have you indicated that, that? No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right. just saying I'm qualified if I want to be. <laughs> there are a lot of members who are my set that uh, are interested in becoming speaker. But what I'm saying is that we're trying to enter the speakership election as a united front. You talked about the first members, for example. Right. If we don't enter this, the race as a united front, we can end up having a disconcerted as we don't want a rank cross national tent, tent national assembly. So we want to enter it as a united force. And one of the ways we can achieve that is by the issue of zoning. So if we go into it as a united force, then we can have People are looking at the speakership election. We are looking at four years of governance because it's important for all the members, as, it, as much as it's important for all, the, all Nigerians, it's important for all members because you need to perform to get re-elected. And one of the ways you can perform, obviously we have two main duties, lawmaking and constitutional, con constituency outreach. And a lot of our people are only interested in the aspect of constituency outreach, how many rules are we able that, to facilitate? Your, your, your constituencies say they don't even see you until another election cycle. Yeah, a, a lot of people complain about that for some members, but I go every weekend. I've spent only four weekends in Abuja in four years. So one Abuja, once a year, I'm in Abuja. So every weekend, I'm in my constituency. So one of the ways to perform, as I was saying, is to attract projects back to your constituency. And if you don't have a organized house, if you don't have, if we have a rancorous assembly, you will not be able to achieve that and you will not be okay. returned. So it's good for Nigerians, it's good for all members as well. Let me be straight about this. Uh, yeah. Give us a sense of where you think mm. this is headed, the speakership. The issue of zoning. Now, firstly, what we are saying as a group is wherever the leadership says, that's where we're going to go. Now, if we go to Northwest, for example, like a lot of people have been clamoring, right? Because they ask a lot of questions and say, hey, the president is from the Southwest. The vice president elect, sorry, is from the Northeast, right? So we've got four other zones. Where is the Senate president this is going to go? A lot of people are saying Southeast, South, South, Northwest, and all that. But I'm more concerned about the House of Representatives here. So a lot of people have been clamoring for the Northwest in the House because we have a situation where they, 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 they give us the highest number of votes in, in the last election. Is that just the basis? No, there are, ma there are many. Because what are the other what, what factors are you considering here? And are there any names coming up? Oh, I, I was looking at your screen earlier yes. on, and you've got I, I think I saw about ten Maybe to eleven names. If you can if you can yeah. pull that up, yes. Yeah. And and like I said, they cut across all the zones apart from the southwest. Mm -hmm. From the screen there, I can yeah. see Ahmed Wase, who is mm -hmm. the current. Deputy Speaker, Speaker of the House. Mm -hmm. He's from North Central, and North Central performed very well for for our party. Yusuf Gadji is also in North, North Central. We've got Tajuddin Abbas on the screen as well. He's from the northwest part of the uh, of the country, mm -hmm. who is definitely a quality candidate. Who's qualified? Mm -hmm. He's going into his fourth term now. Chairman House Committee on Land Transport, PhD mm -hmm. order. He's got so the so highest rank, number. So, of, so he's a ranking yeah. member. He's got the highest number of bills signed under the law in the Night Assembly. So it's a, it's a quality candidate. We've got Miriam, as you said, Honorable yes. Miriam. Yeah, talking about uh, affirm uh, mm -hmm. affirmative, uh, affirmative, affirmative action. action.
on. Yes. Yeah, she's got a point. But like I said, everyone has got a point. That's why we're saying, if we just say everyone has got a point, I've got a point and as well. And Benjamin Carlo is saying, look, it's a turn of he the was, southeast. He's the current spokesman of the house. Right. My good friend, he's got, he's got a charisma, he's got a capacity as well. So when we talk about zoning, though, we're not trying to say no more competence or no more capacity. Mm -hmm. When we say zoning, we're talking about competent people in that zone. They are competent people across board. So we have to look for ways to do this thing, to, have a, to go into that election as a united front. And uh, they're talking about that united front. You must be very careful so that you don't come out in tatters. But quickly here, mm -hmm. now, now let's speak about the agenda. Yeah. You spoke about uh, going to your constituents almost on a week, every week. I do that every yeah. week. Very is expensive, very though. Yes, yeah. and, I'm even wondering and that's, if that's, and that's even supported by the constitution. That's I what mean, this whole the... constituency project thing. No, it's, it's all right. Uh, it, be, it, yeah, uh, it's, it's standard. In what world, why not just Nigeria? Mm. In the United States, it's called the pork barrel. You attract projects to your constituency. Well, that's uh, what representation is all, all, truly all about. So now, speak to us about the agenda mm. uh, for, the for the National tenth. Assembly, for the Tenth Assembly, mm. specifically uh, the both. Uh, now, talking about the Senate and mm. the Rep, what will it take for us to see three key things on the agenda that will ultimately get Nigeria working again? Or define the, the, next the agenda of our Nigeria is going to get working is going to be set by the executive arm of government. Our job as, legislator, as, as legislators is to make sure that it works. So to, to make sure that when it comes to bills, when it comes to motions, when it comes to things that, when it comes to the lawmaking aspect of things, to facilitate and make sure that they succeed. Our job is to make sure they succeed, not to be at loggerheads and so that can create content for the world. Yeah, to, but how firm about. will the principle of checks and balances, separation oh, of powers, we've got our how strongly will you emphasize that in the 10th assembly 100 percent is very it's very, of... it's very very important right it's very very important we don't want to do what the state assemblies do where they have no say as to what the governors do in the states uh, no 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 uh, representative I can't, I mean, not even the, the state assembly <laughs> because one of the key concern of nigerians is even with the national assembly specifically the senate mm. they felt that the senate uh, leadership this time uh, has been a rubber stamp. Uh, almost everything about President Buhari goes. Uh, so they, they didn't quite see uh, action from them. So that's why she's asking, how well will that play out in the 10th Assembly? Well, I can't really speak for the Senate, like I said. But I think uh, the National Assembly should do a better job in protect, projecting what we do. We disagree with the executive a lot. And when we talk about the duties we do, a lot of people just think about plenary. Plenary is 20% of the work we do. At the committee levels, there's a lot of disagreements, there's a lot of fights, there's a lot of pushback on the committee level. I know what I've, been, what I've witnessed at committee levels in the last four years, and it's a very, very unfair assessment. And I think it's our fault because we actually don't showcase what we do to the world enough. We should do better. I guess that's a good place to leave it. Thank you very much. Thank you. My pleasure. Akin Alabi is member-elect, APC, Egbeda Onoara, federal constituency, joining us Thank on you. Newsnight tonight. We wish you the very best. But you've not told us what the complexion of the 10th National Assembly <laughs> will look like. We'll leave it there. Thank you.